Hello my friends, my name is Ashkan and in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about Ronion and Damelec supports. You mostly know what are the details of these two useful supports, but let's review them. By knowing all the details, we can then have a tutorial video on the design of Trunions and Demilex supports in Scissor 2. Trunions and Demilex are one of the most frequently used supports in piping. For making a Trunion or a Demilex, we have to simply weld a pipe, normally one or two sizes less than the parent pipe. But what makes Trunions attractive to the engineers? The first item is better load distribution on the parent pipe. Trunion supports distribute loads more evenly on the parent pipe, which can help reduce stress concentrations on the supported pipe body. The second feature is rotation and movement capability. Although Trunion movements are limited in some designs, but in general, it can give the pipe the movement ability while controlling its weight. This is useful when the expansion and contraction is predicted in the system. In addition, as the Trunions and dummy legs have a similar reaction to the temperature variations, they are more adjusted to the piping system. The third feature is providing stability on tall piping. By using trunions beneath the elbows, the weight of the tall vertical run pipes is controlled. Reduction in buckling is another advantage of trunion supports that appears when high axial loads present in vertical installations. Trunions and dummy legs help engineers also in vibration control. By using these supports near the equipment's nozzle, the downstream piping is somehow isolated from intense vibrations of the equipment. Simpler installation and lower cost are the final positive features of the trunions and dumb legs since they are made out of pipe. However, besides the mentioned advantages, load-bearing capacity of trunion supports is usually less than civil structural supports such as edge or eye profiles or foundations. So, we as pipe stress engineers must check the weld location from a failure viewpoint and investigate the ability to carry the piping loads. The loads which are mostly the tangential or longitudinal load and their corresponding moments. One of the most important factors for the design of trunions or dummy legs is to keep the length of the trunion below 1 meter unless you do the exact calculations of the trunion. The chances of weld and body failure increase with an increase in trunion length. In this table, you can see the effect of each factor on the trunion strength and capacity. As you can see on the left column, an increase in the trunion and parent pipe diameter, their thickness, material allowable stress, and also adding reinforcing pad can enhance the durability of the trunions and dummy legs. On the other hand, an increase in design temperature or pressure, pipe mill tolerance, corrosion elements, and trunion height will weaken the trunion. Now let's see some types of trunions and dummy legs which are mostly used in piping systems. The left picture is a simple trunion support that is used in horizontal lines in unpaved areas and with a pad. The second picture refers to trunion on elbow in vertical pipes. In other words, when a pipe direction is changed from horizontal to vertical, the trunion can be used under the elbow to control the weight of the vertical run of piping components. In cases where the piping system is connected to a rotary equipment, trunions are usually used to control the vibration of the system. In this case, the closest support to the rotary equipment's nozzle is trunion to control the vibration of the equipment and the rotational moments on the nozzle, which is a critical point in the whole system. In these trunions, the piping system is installed on an adjustable trunion which facilitates the alignment of piping flange and nozzle of the equipment. The adjustable trunion supports are like this. As you can see, some bolts and one base plate is used below the trunion to help the construction engineers for better adjustment of the trunion height during installation. As you probably noticed, a strange structure is placed between the trunion and the ground. This component is called a stanchion and is used to help us to reduce the height of the trunion. As I told you, the height of the trunion is its weakness and we try to keep it as small as much as we can. 
So when the BOP of the pipe is too high and the calculations show the trunnion will be damaged during the operation, we usually use the stanchion to reduce the stresses over the trunnion's structure. This figure is showing us a dummy leg. When using a trunnion on a horizontal line, we usually call it a dummy leg. In this case, a stop or a guide is usually set on the support to control the displacements and rotations on the elbow. This helps the engineers to control the loads from piping system and the nozzle of the rotary equipment as it is limited by the allowable nozzle loads. The last type of trunnion is trunnion on vertical pipes. When having a vertical run piping system, climbing up a pipe rack as an example, we use this type of trunnion to control the weight of the piping components. This happens when a trunnion on elbow is not able to control the whole weight of vertical pipes or when we want to have a restraint on the middle of a tall vertical pipe. As you probably noticed through the previous figures, we always use a trunnion or a dummy leg in some sizes below the main or the parent pipe. This table shows us the exact size of the trunnion for each main pipe. Deviation from this table is allowed when exact sizing calculation is performed for the trunnion. But how to calculate if a trunnion is suitable for our work or not? It's a good question. Please like the video and subscribe the channel and then let's go deep into the calculations. Based on the clogs equation, we need to see if the combined longitudinal stress and combined circumferential stress are below the allowable stresses of the trunnion. If happened, the trunnion can be used. As you can see, the combined longitudinal stress is summation of longitudinal bending stress, axial loading stress, and longitudinal pressure stress and must be below 1.5 times of the SH or hot allowable stress to be passed. Secondly, the combined circumferential stress is obtained by summing up the circumferential bending stress, axial loading stress, and circumferential pressure stress and must be below 1.5 times of the SH again to be passed. In some cases, when the turn-in is failed here, Adding pad below horizontal trunnions can help reducing the stresses on the attachment section by increasing the effective wall thickness. The thickness in which must tolerate the internal pressure of the system, corrosion issues, and the loads from the piping system. So, don't forget to keep the trunnion height as low as possible and use pad to always be on the safe side of the design. You can find much more details on the calculation of trunnion on the highlighted link, which I also added the link below this video. You can open the link and by giving the input data into the blank cells, the website automatically calculates the loads and the stresses and tells you if the selected trunnion can tolerate the loads from your piping system. Before ending this video, let's see some actual pictures from 3D design plans. The first picture belongs to a pump's inlet. As you can see, a dummy leg is used at the inlet of the pump to control the loads and moments on the suction nozzle. Plus, two trunnions are also used. The left one has a guide and a pad on it. The next picture is a trunnion and an elbow. The keynote here is using a goalpost support below the trunnion to control the stresses on the trunnion's body. As you know from this tutorial, we need to keep the trunnion's length as low as possible to stay away from failure. The last picture shows us an adjustable turn-in on a pump suction nozzle that helps the construction engineers for better alignment during the installation. Well, I tried my best to give you all the necessary information during adding a turn-in to your design. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If it was useful for you, please make me happy by liking this video and subscribing my channel. Thank you everyone and bye-bye.